So what's here is contain the seed for creating a model of health care which is consonant with the doctrine of Western spirituality as it unfolds in our life as a therapeutic process. The significant words are yes or no, anything more, and evil. So we're going to use for the words anything more, surplus, excess. Looking more deeply into these terms, we may find the basis for a mind-body health care paradigm that the ancients knew about quite clearly. Here's the tie-in. The action of yes is connected with the first cervical vertebrae, known as the atlas. So every one of us can shake our head yes, right? Shake your head yes. The atlas is the vertebrae connected with yes. An atlas in mythology held up the world. Atlas held up the world. The world rested on Atlas's shoulders. The free movement of this vertebrae, as I said, allows us to nod yes, and we've all done that. The second cervical vertebrae is called the axis, the one that allows you to say no. The free movement of this vertebrae, of course, allows no, and the axis relates to how the world spins. The world spins on an axis. On the microanatomical level, these two vertebrae represent the macro existence of this planet, what's held up and how it spins, that it exists and that it can rotate to continue its existence. When there's a disorder, displacement or derangement of these two vertebrae, the entire spinal column can be thrown out of order, creating all sorts of faulty curvatures and postural disturbances. It's estimated that over 70 million Americans, and maybe closer to 100 million, suffer from chronic back problems. So these two vertebrae are the central issue here. And as we said, the vagus nerve travels through the cervical vertebrae. And when the cervical vertebrae are deranged and they're out of place, the nerve is impinged on. And when it's impinged on, we're going to have eye problems, ear problems, heart problems, lung problems. Those four areas will be directly affected by a derangement of the vagus nerve being impinged on by the disorder or displacement of the vertebrae. It's well known, especially amongst osteopaths and chiropractors, how central and seminal the spinal column is to creating health or illness physically. Many nerves pass through the spinal column. The impingement on them caused by the distortions of vertebral malformations has profound effects on the rest of the body so that the musculature and organ systems don't get the correct innervation from the nerves. So the organ systems and the musculature begin to come into disorder. They begin to break down. Added to this is the torque produced by postural compensations affected by spinal column displacements, resulting in muscle spasm and constrictions of arteries flowing through these muscles, subsequently cutting off the blood supply to various organs, resulting in organ pathology all the way eventually to cancer. What causes the bodily breakdown? The answer resides in the yes or no. When yes or no is replaced by yes and no, we have discovered the source for all the mental, emotional, physical disturbances besetting us. We also can add to that, not only is there yes and no, but there can be an excess of yes and an excess of no. Too much saying yes to things. Too much saying no to things. Some excess. In the Western tradition, it's said that mental activity of doubt as we said, is the seed cause of all our difficulties. This point is highlighted in the story of Adam and Eve. In this Garden of Eden, Eve is told by God to listen to his voice alone, the one voice. The serpent appears as the voice of doubt in the garden and whispers in her ear to eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to become his God. This is the tree whose fruits God explicitly warned them against eating lest they die. So we're given a pointer about where death resides. So death may reside in the excess of yes or no, or in the yes and no. It may reside there. Eve hears the second voice. The serpent's seduction and suggestion is quite persuasive. The voice of doubt, and the word doubt means two. This number meaning conflict in the number system of the Western wisdom. Eve then begins to doubt whose voice to obey. The word obey means to give ear. Who do I give ear to? Now I'm cast into a state of extreme anxiety because I'm now in a position of having to listen to two voices and which one do I listen to? After all, the proposition to become as God is tremendous, but God said obey only this one voice. So she's in grave doubt, we're in grave doubt. That's the archetypal story. 
Adam and Eva fall into doubt, we fall into doubt. We're in the throes of yes and no, and we succumb. So the story represents the struggle of us, faced literally with choices on a day-to-day -day basis. Many of us are in a constant state of doubt, indecision, ambivalence, afraid to choose, maintaining yes and no almost perpetually. Try moving your head yes and no at the same time. You try moving your head yes and no at the same time. You notice what happens. What do you experience? This is the effect of doubt on our biomental system. The intimate relationship existing between mental and physical functioning. When you move your head yes and no, you feel confused, disoriented, displaced, and you begin to see that a derangement will begin to take place in the vertebral system if you keep doing this. So your first and second vertebrae that holds up the world and allows you to spin normally begins to malfunction. As that begins to go out of place, the rest of the spinal column will go out of place and the osteopaths and chiropractors begin their practice from that point of view that the basis of all disturbances for them starts with deformed structure or malfunctioning in the central spinal column. As doubt continues and expands, we can begin to see a whole host of emotional, mental and physical reverberations. In the emotional mental realm, obsessional compulsive activity, phobias, tics, are all examples of the struggle of yes and no trying to become yes or no. The exaggeration of yes and no can eventually become manic depressive illness because they're constantly going up and down. They're constantly going in a state of elation, depression, up, down, what's called commonly bipolar. The constant alternation of yes and no manifested as elation and depression. If we extend it further, we come to the most severe ambivalence imaginable, namely schizophrenia. Within the description, we find its culmination in catatonia, the epitome of yes and no brought to its most exquisite expression virtually to a standstill. Because in the schizophrenic state of catatonia, you don't move a muscle. You're afraid, your ambivalence is so severe that if I move one muscle, I'll fall into a million pieces. I'll become annihilated. I do not dare move one muscle because my yes and no is so great. This is not to say that in one individual there is a continuum from doubt through various physical ailments, but we see that doubt may lead us along a certain path to certain physical and emotional disturbances, as we've said, that it is the seed cause on the mental level. It's choosing the death way, because if we choose according to what doubt has brought us, we've chosen according to the archetypal story to eat of that which causes us to die because that doubt is going to remain with us. It remains with us from childhood and it stays with us throughout our lives. And we move in a state of indecision and ambivalence and unwillingness to take a firm yes or no stance about something. We asked the question before, do you want to live forever? Yes or no? Well, you know, if I want to live forever, you'll see that the elaborations will be endless stories layered upon layers of things that are really not germane to the issue at hand. Because what you answer leaves you free. Yes, I want to do it, will motivate you to take the step to stay in the direction of life. No, will motivate you to take a different direction. And that's fine and all well and good. There's nothing else to talk about, right? A seemingly trivial aspect of that is, you want to go to the movies tonight? Well, I don't know, because, you know, if I go to the movies, then I won't get that work done that I meant to do, and I got to do my tech. Yes or no? You want to go, yes or no? Why? Why do we put it in that way? Because when you say yes or no, everything takes care of itself afterwards. It works out for you. You've dealt with the issue at hand, and by making that statement, you've told the truth. When you go beyond the yes or no, you're already swearing falsely, as we mentioned in the Sermon on the Mount idea, we're making false statements about things. We're making rationalizations and explanations and we're fobbing them off as facts. We're making opinions and so on. How do you know that if you go to the movie, you won't get to what you're looking to get to that night? How do you know what the future will eventuate as? The question at hand is, Yes or no? What do you want to do? So 
What strikes a particular person would be quite different from the next. But the common denominator for everyone is yes and no.